on the acute diarrhea and the chronic diarrhea and the other aspects of the acid peptic disease etc now my aim of discussion is related with something about the gluten enteropathy it is also known as celiac disease i am professor dr sayed ali adar and i am visiting professor of medicine at Jinnah Sin Medical University and continuously taking the lecture for the for your batch, third year batch. Scenario, this is very important. A 18 year old medical student is presented with abdominal blotting and frequent loose motions since six years. The frequency of defecation was three to four per day associated with abdominal polyp. The stools were resembling of the stools of the cow, cow dung, what is called, unformed stool, gober ki tarang, large quantity stools, brown in color, are very offensive. He had also increased flatulence. He cannot maintain the wuzu. He lost 7 kg of weight in last 3 months. He was referred to the professor of medicine by the dermatologist who treated him for the relapsing remitting mesycobulus skin eruptions. On examination, the temperature was 99 degrees Fahrenheit pulse 102 per minute and his bounding pulse BP is 122 by 78 anemia was positive and that is why the pulse is increased and is bounding he cannot perceive vibration sense in the lower limbs this means the posterior column of the spinal cord is involved abdomen was soft but distended due to the accumulation of the gases. The hemoglobin was 10 gram and the mean corpuscular volume is 104. The patient is anemic and it is a macrocytic type of anemia he has. Total leukocyte count is 3400. It is lower down. Platelet is 130,000. Normally, it should be 150 at least. It is lower down. The random blood sugar is 109. It is normal. Stool DR was unformed, offensive. WBC is 2 to 3 per high power field. But there was no occult blood. And ultrasound abdomen was unremarkable. So questions are asked are what is the differential diagnosis? thing is this, that the patient is suffering from a chronic diarrhea. This is a chronic diarrhea. Off and on. So many years. The duration is much. Six years. When you are talking about the diarrhea, you should decide whether it is a small bowel diarrhea or the large bowel diarrhea. So the diagnosis become easy to us. The differential diagnosis is manifold. The commonest cause of the small bowel diarrhea in this country is giardia, giardiasis. That is the commonest one. The other one is tuberculosis enteritis involving the tuberculosis. This is another differential diagnosis. The third one, the differential related is 
what is called is the, the gluten enteropathy. The fourth one is lymphomas involving the intestines. This is these are the basic differential diagnosis. There may be other many more other differential diagnosis. For example, the in in his case, the most of the physician had diagnosed this case as irritable bowel syndrome (IBS). But in IBS, the weight loss so much weight loss, and the stools so much higher quantity. Large quantity is against the feature. How will you further investigate? You have to done the endoscopy. You have to done the <coughs> CT scanning with our the abdomen with con with contrast. You have to do the lower GI endoscopy and make. The diagnosis. You have to do all the serum levels of vitamins to see that absorption is there or not. What is the most probable diagnosis? Because the skin eruption, vesicular blood skin eruption was there. He was referred by the dermatologist actually. Now this vesicular blood skin eruption has got a lot of differential diagnosis. There. It may be from ficus vulgaris, bullies from figoid, and the dermatid dermatitis herpetiformis. Now, dermatitis herpetiformis is the hard data for the glut gluten enteropathy or celiac disease. My diagnosis in this case is the gluten enteropathy. Lines of management definitely will be discussed later on when I discuss further. The table is in front of you. The small bowel diarrhea or the large bowel diarrhea. Now the finding is that the frequency of defecation in small bowel diarrhea is normal to mildly increase, two to three motion per day. The large bowel diarrhea, the frequency of motion is high, ten, fifteen, sixteen. Fecal volume is increased usually in small bowel diarrhea. Normal is very less, less chances. In large bowel diarrhea, there is small volume of stools. Fecal mucus is absent in small bowel diarrhea. It is often present in large bowel diarrhea. Fecal WBC is also increased in large bowel diarrhea, but it is very very less in small bowel diarrhea. Tenesmus is absent usually. In large bowel diarrhea, it is often present. Urgency is absent; you can hold it. In large bowel diarrhea, it is the urgency; you can't hold the 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 your feces when it comes in the rectum. Dyskinesia is absent. What is dyskinesia? Now, dyskinesia is the actually the condition in which there is a, you, you feel pain in defecation. It is at the anal canal. In the large bowel diarrhea, it is often present because it is involved. Vomiting may be present. In the small bowel diarrhea, it is infrequently present in the large bowel diarrhea. Weight loss is often present because patient is losing the nutrients. In large bowel diarrhea, it is infrequently present. Steatorrhea means the, the the bulk of the, of the stool has got lot of fat in it. You cannot you know flush the uh, stool properly. You have to double flush. In the in your latrine, the steatorrhea may be present. In large bowel diarrhea, it is often 
often present is not usually a feature. Stateri is a feature of the small bowel diary, actually, I will say. Now, celiac disease actually is a disease, is a malabsorption. It comes in the, under the heading of the malabsorption syndrome. It is damaging the small intestine. Secondly, it is maybe narrated as an autoimmune disorder. And the auto the antibodies are formed against some of the nutrients which you are taking. It is intolerance to the gluten which is present in the wheat, ray and barley. Remember the three things, wheat, ray and barley. This is the gluten. Subsay other the thing is that it is present in the bread. The people often use bread. And it is intolerance because there is a lot of gluten in it. So it is intolerance to the gluten. The gl genetic contribution may be there, it is possible. And the immune component antibodies to the specific dietary protein fractions, they are the main culprits. They cause the glucose intolerance, alcohol soluble component of wheat, rye, or barley and protein, this is the gluten. The protein flow that form the structure of the duff. The duff aap ka manta hai, jo aap aata gunte hai, gunda wa aata, duff. Wo protein, gluten ki hoja se banta hai. The specific peptide fraction of the protein found in wheat as glutenins and gladins in rye it is the sacculinus in barley it is hordinus. Now these are the culprit type of the subfractions of the proteins and the autoantibodies are formed against these structures. If you take these things, the antibody antigen reaction occurs and destruction occurs in the small intestine. So the stool mass is increased and the vitamin K absorption because it is salt, it is the lipid soluble vitamin A is the lipid soluble vitamin, it is also decreased. Iron is also lost. E vitamin E cannot be absorbed. There is weakness, weight loss, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. These are the common symptoms of the celiac disease. Histologically, normally there are intestinal villi, microvilli, which absorbs the nutrients. Here, if you find on the endoscope, you find the shortened villi. On the biopsy, it is clearly seen in the histopathological slide on the left side, you see the short villi. The pathophysiology is that the damage to the small bowel occurs, the trophy and the flattening of the villi reduce area for the absorption, and the cellular deficiency of the disaccharidesis and the peptidesis reduce nutrient transport carriers. So the stool becomes definitely more, it is of smotic type of the diarrhea. You, you have you got because of the destruction of the microvilli of the small intestine. It may be jugdinum and it may be allium. The extra intestinal effect because of the malabsorption, anemia, bone loss, muscle weakness, pelvic neuropathy may be there, endocrine disorders may be associated, and the follicular hyperkeratosis, which is a uh, skin disease may be, may occur. In Canada, that the body attacks normal tissue resulting in the damage to the lining of the small intestinal villi. And these microvilli contain blood vessels which absorb the nutrients. If there is destruction of this, or the trophy of the microvilli, then their absorption will be decreased. The villi actually increase the area of absorption. Because it is, it is a trophy of the villi, it will decrease the absorption. 
digestive many nutrients are carried away by the circulating blood because it is disturbed now you cannot absorb the blood is not going into the uh, portal vein and portal tracts and then the liver if we lie are damaged the vitamins the mineral the calcium carbohydrates protein and the fats are not absorbed well the risk factor of the celiac disease is that malignant disease can occur if it is not treated properly for many years lymphomas is the most important complication deficiency in folic acid vitamin b12 fat soluble vitamins increased mortality due to the increased risk of malignancy because lymphoma can occur the other adenocarcinoma can occur the type 1 diabetes disease may be associated as a polyglandular autoimmune disease there is a disease which is known as polyglandular autoimmune disease is a part of it arthritis can occur because of the loss of all you are losing proteins you are losing carbohydrates you are losing vitamins calcium vitamin d which is a fat soluble vitamin etc osteoporosis is worse in this condition endomes now the risk factor where there is endometrial antibody negative uh, gluten enteropathy is more prone to develop the complications and those who respond few respond to steroids down syndrome if it consists of or it has the part of the uh, gluten enteropathy it has got worse prognosis unexplained iron deficiency anemia will worse the prognosis and if it is associated in 10% of cases or 20% of cases the dermatitis herpetiformis which i say the it is a vesico bullous eruptions you see in this slide the differential diagnosis is manifold i already mentioned out anorexia nervosa autoimmune enteropathy the bacterial overgrowth collagen is pro pro is a condition in which two constituents should be lost at least two either carbohydrate or lipid or carbohydrate or protein but if two are lost then it is called as pro it is tropical spru in most of the, of the cases it may be collagen is pro is seen in the template template zones crohn's disease is very making because it involves the terminal ileum mm-hmm. human immun immunodeficiency enteropathy there are lot of complications of hiv infective gastroenteritis irritable bowel syndrome ischemic enteritis lactose intolerance very important differential diagnosis pancreatic insufficiency of chronic pancreatitis is another differential diagnosis and soya protein intolerance and intestinal lymphomas they should be excluded if you are not doing the biopsy and you have got no money for the tests you have to exclude these conditions now how the how you will diagnose the initial blood test historic you will take the history of the patient serology and biopsy of the small intestine in the skin manifestation that is the dermatitis and formus or keratosis then 90% have no gi symptoms in the biopsy is positive clinically the patient is has got very least symptoms negative but blood test is positive it is silent celiac disease because there are no motions now and the third uh, variant is the blood test was positive biopsy was negative normal clinically there are no symptoms it is known as the latent celiac disease the act in active celiac disease there should be all features which i have discussed previously should be there otherwise it is silent celiac or it may be latent celiac disease the serology is the most important test nowadays called anti ttg that is anti tissue trans glutaminase antibody we are doing on uh, daily or, or alternate days we do it 
the IgA and IgG both should be tested. IgA is most important than IgG. And the anti endomarcial antibody IgA EMA acceptable antigen. Highly specific marker of the disease. Anti endomarcial antibody. And anti deaminated gladin peptide antibody. Again, it is uh, the negative TTG with or EMA or IgA deficient. In those cases, the, this test will be positive. Anti gladin antibody IgA, IgG, and IgA, IgM. It is used for the children under two years. Now, this test is done in if the child is less than two years of age. It is a very sensitive test. Now, this is the endoscopic view which is seen normal villi and the villus trophy in celiac disease. Diagnostic is check the TTG, total serum IgA. If it is negative, there is no celiac disease. It may be latent, it may be silent. But if it is positive, it means that it, it is now you have to go for the upper G endoscopy and take the biopsy. Pathology, there are many mucosal enzymes are altered due to the damage to the absorptive cells, decrease in the disaccharides, peptidases, alkaline phosphatase, ATPase, asterase, length of the small intestine varies from patient to patient. Because you know the small intestine is a very large intestine. It is not a small intestine. Correlates with the severity of the clinical symptoms. And usually proximal small intestine more severely involved. The distal duodenum and jugenum is mainly involved in this disease. Loss of normal village structure increase in the number of the intraepithelial lymphocytes and gamma and the delta D cells, T cells in the biopsy. These changes decrease the amount of the epithelial surface which are available for the digestion and absorption in the involved bowel. The treatment is only one, that is the gluten-free diet should be gluten-free, diet should be gluten-free. High protein, it should be high caloric, high iron, folic acid should be replaced, B12 should be replaced, A, K, D, E, they all should be replaced with vitamin B complex. And the calcium and the zinc and the magnesium and the fibers, they should be added. So that the defecation occurs with no problem. It, it becomes easy for these people. Otherwise they become constipated. The only treatment is the lifelong adherence to the gluten-free diet. Small intestines start to heal and overall health improves. Some of them have given in the very, very you know, severe conditions the steroids to suppress the antibodies, but usually they are failed. Immunosuppression has also been tried, but the only treatment in the world is gluten free diet. Remember, the medical management is electrolyte and the fluid replacement, vitamin and the mineral supplementation, calcium and vitamin D administration, nutritional management is delete the gluten sources, wheat, rye and barley. Substitute with the corn or potato, rice, soya bean, topikia and arrowroot. You can take it. The patient can take these things, but not the wheat, rye, and barley. And read the internet for the food tables. Food labels, tables are written in the uh, internet. If you open it, which foods are banned, there is a list. Again, when you will buy the food, you will see that it is gluten containing ingredients are present in it or not. Do not buy those agents. 
this is how we manage these cases. Only the gluten free diet can save you. Otherwise, you will the patient will definitely have the complications. This is the discussion which I have made with the gluten enteropathy or celiac disease. I hope that you have understood my lecture and I also hope that you will remember till final year because in the final year specifically the gluten enteropathy is one of the main differential diagnoses of the chronic diarrhea. I am very thankful to you. You have listened to my lecture. Inshallah Ta'ala, in the next occasion we will discuss another topic. Allah Hafiz.